All right, so we understand something of how entertainment remains the same, but it changes its flavor as we go through the classes. What happens if we start moving down? What happens if we keep the same class, but change the mode of expression? Let's move down to comedy. We're going to fill in this row now, and then we'll be able to compare what happens in comedy to what happens in entertainment in each of the classes. That'll help give us a, an idea of how the spectrum on our palette changes both vertically and horizontally. Okay, in terms of comedy, the very first thing we're going to look at is a situation comedy. We'll put that down here. Because what is a universe after all? A fixed state of things, primarily a situation. So when you think of a situation comedy, it's actually a comedy based on a fixed state of things, based in the universe class. Now, you'll notice in Some Like It Hot, it's also about uh, a guy who's masquerading as a woman, or who is living life as a woman. It's treated more seriously in Crime Game. But why is this not a lot closer to here? Why is Some Like It Hot not closer to the Crime Game? Because of the way we're involving the audience. We're entertaining them with a twist in the Crime Game, and yet over here in comedy, we're making them laugh about a situation. It's not a twist because the audience knows that Jack Lemmon is a man impersonating a woman all the way through. Just like in Tootsie, for example, it's um, a man impersonating a woman. The audience knows this. However, even though the audience knows it here, or although the audience knows it here, they don't know it here. The audience is not supposed to know that the woman he falls in love with is actually a man, which is what makes it a twist or a psychology played for entertainment with dramatic overtones, as opposed to this area, which is just a situation all the way through of which the audience is aware. So it's important for the audience to be aware both of the mode of expression and the class in which you're working. That's what determines whether it will be perceived as this particular flavor of emotional experience, a situation comedy, where you know the truth and you laugh because of the situation even though nobody else knows it, or entertainment through twists over in psychology because you're buying a line uh, of goods all the way through and then finally it turns out that it's something quite different than you thought you were getting. Different way to play your audience. That's what this chart is all about. How do you play your audience emotionally? All right, we can also look up here in this line and see the difference, as I mentioned, between now we see if universe is consistent and we simply change the mode of expression, what happens? You can see the similarity in Blade Runner. Blade Runner has this atmosphere that is surrounding everything, permeating everything, and it's entertaining. Over here, there's an atmosphere that permeates everything, involves everything, but it's played for laughs. The similarity is the part that's the universe part. The part that's different is whether it's entertainment or comedy, the mode of expression. Similarly, moving along this way, the part that's the same is the mode of expression. The part that differs is the class in which it falls, the structural aspect. So let's take a look at our next intersection of structure and storytelling and look at what happens when we have physics and comedy together. What do you think we get? Well, if this is a situation comedy, here we get a physical comedy. In this particular area, we saw physical comedy in the pie fight and in the slapstick humor of the Three Stooges. So we can see now comparing to speed, where we saw thrills, it's still physical activity. Notice the similarity a lot of stuff in motion. But whereas one was played for entertainment through thrills, the other one is played for laughs. So, looking along the comedy line, we can also see that we had a funny situation and some like it hot. Now we change to a funny activity with the Three Stooges of the Great Race. It's still funny, but a different kind of humor. And so, just with these four areas, you can begin to see how our genre chart, our palette of emotional experiences for our audience, is beginning to fill itself out through the intersecting points of four different modes of expression and four different structural perspectives. All right, carrying comedy along a little farther, we go into the mind area. And in mind, 
we're going to be dealing with a comedy of manners. Why? Because it's a comedy of attitude, typically called a comedy of manners. So, what we want to look at is how fun is poked at people because of their attitudes. Comedy of manners, and we used crimes and misdemeanors, okay? Now, again, comparing, look at Junior, the one that we showed with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and we had an entertaining concept, he's pregnant, a man gets pregnant, mind, okay? Now, instead of being entertaining, we move down here to um, comedy, and we're still looking at an attitude, at fixed attitudes, but we're playing against those attitudes, the buffoon attitudes, in a comedy of manners, as it were. Again, down the comedy line now, we can see a funny situation and some like a hot physical comedy in Stooges and Great Race and a comedy of manners in Crimes and Misdemeanors. So if the whole film of Crimes and Misdemeanors was like this, the whole thing would be a comedy of manners. It's not, but this particular scene describes this flavor very nicely. we got to fill out the last comedy area here. We have one last section we need to look at, and that's going to be the uh, comedy of errors. Remember, we had twists in psychology, making mistakes, making the audience make mistakes for entertainment. Well, in psychology, if you make the audience make mistakes for laughs, then you end up with um, comedy uh, of errors. So let's take a look at that. And it's not just necessarily the audience making mistakes, but at least the audience is empathizing with a character who is making mistakes. That's another way it can be played. We've seen in Tootsie, it's interesting how these come up. I, I actually didn't pick these clips, but they seem to have a common theme to them, don't they? Uh, Cry Game, Tootsie, Some Like It Hot, but uh, no, these were picked by my staff when I was at Screenplay Systems, um, working as the Director of Research and Development for Dramatica. Uh, in any event, we can notice a similarity here in terms of twists of one kind and twists of another. Errors are made. Errors either by the audience or by a character, in this case, that we care about. He is, does not recognize that she is actually a guy, and when he finds out, then he, um, he uh, has this twist experience, entertaining twist. Over here we have in Tootsie a comedy of errors because he misunderstands um, what she actually wants. She says what she wants to him when he's masquerading as Dorothy, but in the real world, that's not at all what she wants. It's kind of her fantasy world or her um, inner truth, but because he misunderstands it and is played for laughs, it becomes a comedy of errors. Now you'll notice that he goes over to the other guy's shirt tail and he uh, wipes his face on it, uh, on the tuxedo tail. That is moving over here to comedy of manners, and it moves it out of one realm and into another. Later when we get the entire chart finished up, we'll see how we can move across the chart, as I've mentioned, to create an emotional pathway for the audience, and that can even happen several times within a scene. 